We are live. Oh, Scouty's, uh, seeing, they're talking in chat. Oh my gosh. DCSF 18. <laughs> oh, man. Someone else joined, didn't they? Justice 132. You might be disappointed at the conditions that we're flying in. I'm wondering if he has TAC pack. Oh, yeah. I'm uh, good to go if you are, I think. Let me uh, make sure I got full. Yeah, I'm full of gas. Did you want to go to the tanker first, or? Yeah, we can end up to the tanker. Yeah. 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 Good to go. Roger. I'm going to go ahead and launch cap one. 310 launching cap one outbound. already in the missions, or some of those missions. Oh, yeah. Uh, they will uh, shoot at stuff for you. Or you can call it an artillery support. Well, I'd like to be the guy shoot It doesn't have the ba best graphics, though, if you're in it, though. I think it's more or less... I'm not sure, like, because it might just be as simple as marking a map, though, because it, it's kind of weird how the grid stuff works, but, yeah, I mean, you yeah, could do it, I guess, with a grid, but. Yeah, because I was just testing it out in the, uh, the arsenal. Yeah, you can do, uh, mortar for support for sure. There's, like, a artillery computer, usually, that you can get into. Yeah, yeah, like, they got the, in one of the, Excuse me. six pounds. Mm -hmm. Six. I'm going to increase our rate of ascent a little bit more. We're going to burners for stage. A little bit more power. Going through a turbulent layer. Looks like we made it out of the rain. There's some visibility for us. I think it should be right up ahead of us somewhere. I'm 
looking for them. All right, inlet ice, master caution. Yep, same. Uh, all right, engine heater is on, pedo heat on. Where is that? Uh, it's on your uh, heater panel, or just below where your battery and uh, and left and right generator switches are. You'll see like a cabin temp knob, which I'm actually going to turn that up to. Then underneath that, you'll see anti-ice, and you'll just flip both of those up. Here, coming a little bit further left, my bad. Right, I think I'm past the tanker. It's a little bit above him now. I was looking down too long. Easy to pull. We're rolling out the bank. I can see him. Right. Actually, I'm gonna go nose hot for him for just a second. Yeah, we're slowly gaining on him, like a hundred knots. Right. Actually, seventy knots right now. But we should be getting up to about a hundred here shortly. turn here. I'll uh, tank first just because uh, we'll have you take off last. Because right. you got the, the least amount of gas anyways. I have more into right now. I got to overshoot on my bad. Oh, sloppy. My part. Yeah, he's coming left right now. I thought he was. Shoot, maybe I'm just being a slob. Formation flying. Shit, my bad. Uh, I'm a noob. Yeah, a noob that can land at like 16 miles a <laughs> bit. But I can't land at half a mile. <laughs> Give it one of our uh, one of our textures. Well, we should probably give it a uh, freaking uh, Royal Mesa's textures because they're also in Carrier Wing Five. Because all of our jets now are occupied by actual pilots. Like we don't have any AI tanker slots anymore. We used to have like a designated tanker. I'm gonna drop on back and I uh, grab some gas from this knucklehead. Yeah, I could probably either give it. Uh yeah, BFA 27 or BFA 195. Yeah, 27 is the Royal Maces, right? And the yeah, 195 are the Dam Busters. Busters. Yeah, those are actually, uh, that's what we should do, actually, is Dam Busters. And then 102 is uh, the Rhino Squadron. Yeah. But yeah, we don't come out and get repainted and figure out how to fly the thing. And I'll get speed <laughs> for that. And that back, I would be... <laughs> I just can't wait for that freaking uh, E2. So I think I'm going to retire from the Super Hornet. What's up? Oh, yeah, you can 
join me and, uh, in the E2. Yeah. Yeah, E2 the, uh, squad. The tiger tails. <laughs> Yeah, I'll become the new doc after I don't completely suck. Shit. There we go. I am topped off now. I'm gonna back on out. Okay. Uh, going right. Or exiting stage right. I know we were also the first squadron to get the Super Hornet. Uh, 1998, I believe it was. Yeah. And, um, VAW 125 is the first, uh, one to have the Delta model on that. Ah. Probably because they're the, the Pacific wing and they're like, oh, we do everyone. I have the good stuff out there. <laughs> Still being guarded by a naval aviator. Yep. Loose right ash. <laughs> Once we get up to a cruising house here, I'm going to turn off my uh, left and right heaters. Because I don't think we're going to be flying through any clouds anymore. Oh, yes. I uh, just followed. Appreciate it. I believe that's what that was. Oh, yeah. I'm good. On the way back, though, I'll probably be uh, dragging a little bit more weight than you. Oh, nice. We just broke through a uh, visibility layer. Yeah. Just wait till we get down to the ship. That's when it goes 
That's for real shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh shoot, are we going through uh, a little bit of turbulence? I'm going to ease it out a little bit. A bit turbulence? Yeah, it feels that way. So we're going through this. Yeah, uh, over there, uh, using, uh, shit. <laughs> we're going through a cirrus cloud layer. Like, that's, that's a little bit like. Yeah, on the way back, I'm going to try to hold on to these tanks unless we get jumped or something like that, so... Right, which, looking at the weather, I highly doubt you will, because yeah. most people don't like these types of things. I, I mean, I can... Yeah, like switch over to the left, Ash. Right. be more interesting to try and jump you guys in the clouds. <laughs> that would be sure. fun. Oops, that was a very sloppy tuck under. Golly, I ended up in here. <laughs> Probably about a hundred feet above you. A rough guesstimation. No worries. Yeah, that was, that was dumb to do at the south shoot and with those uh, that fuel loading on my wings. Yeah. That's when you whip wings off. <laughs> well, the, it, the Super Mario has its uh, roll rate limited, I know, by uh, 30%. Got uh, gas in those things, or if they're if you just have air around a horn that's loaded, like that yeah. uh, 84H that we got on the wing. Uh, a little drive back. Yeah. Let's see those uh, harpoons on board for once. <laughs> <laughs> oh, these are uh, the um, the 84Hs, which are on. Um, yeah, yeah, the slam ERs. Yeah, the but they're they're still the same okay. missile essentially. It's like, like it's got it, the same it, motor it, it, on it. Okay, what is different about it? they do look differently, but I believe like the guidance and all that stuff is still the same. Or they, I know they're made by the same company. Basically everything from the fence back is the same and just has a different warhead and seeker head, I guess. Uh, because, you know, the harpoons have that, uh, that pop-up. Like, uh, they have that. They, they have the, uh... Well, you can, you can the, set, I know, different... Like, the terrain follower. Yeah. Everything, so you can keep putting, like, three, like, three feet up. Well, so the same with these. Wait. These supposedly will, uh, mirror... Yeah, I get the terrain. Little, little drive back. Roger. No worries. <laughs> that was uh that was one of the, my views for a while looking up at the lead granted you're not supposed to look there you're supposed to be flying uh left wing off the right wing so i'm gonna go to fph and roll hold for right now there we go let's see Usually you can find that sweet spot where I can... Yeah, sorry, I'm going to play with my throttle real quick. Uh, right there. I just came yeah. back on it just a tad. Yeah. Uh, 15,000. Uh, first stage burners, I'm guessing. I feel like I have some PIOs, pilot induced oscillations. Uh, 
I bop a little better. I'm trying to minimize that, especially if I'm using FPH and roll hold like I am right now. There should be no excuse for any movement. <laughs> That'd be cool though if there's some program that I don't know, like if we tied like one of the SAM sites to a sim object on uh, on Scouty's Arma server right now, or like if we destroyed it, it gets destroyed in game, you know? Oh, that would be amazing. That would be amazing. Where the stuff and hey, if the weather wasn't like crazy bad, I'd be sitting there with the laser designator. And you could, you could always just like tie it however you wanted. Yeah, but as long as like, I mean, it would be up to us, I guess, just to make the weather the same and whatnot. But yeah, it would be fun. We could always like play out scenarios like that. Like, if um, you could try to tell me four of us where on the map I could place it, yeah. uh, I could sit there and white it with a, a laser designator. And so it, it, would be it doesn't seem like it would be that hard if you just made a simple program that said like, if this, like, if you receive this command, destroy this object, you know? And the same could play out on the Arma server, like, it can be looking for if, like, you know, if, if our, uh, if our jets get shot down by one of these SA-2s in our game, then it will, like, spawn, like, an on-fire F-18 in the air that crashes near you or something like that. <laughs> Maybe like a parachute or something like that, so then all of a sudden you have a side mission, like a rescue a pilot or something. Oh yeah, actually, so you know how you were talking about how like historically, like, volunteer armies have beating conscript armies and stuff? Yeah, typically that's true. <laughs> uh, actually, a really good example of that is uh, the Falklands. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure all the UK army was a uh, volunteer at that time. And I, I think Argentinians yeah, were, uh, yeah, yeah, mostly conscripts. I think they might have had a few volunteers, but a lot of them were conscripts. Yeah. But like, you know, when it's, you're looking at all these Argentinians who, they don't want to be on that shitty ass rock. Yeah. Really I know a lot of them, like, they, they felt like a lot of national pride and whatnot, you know, for defending their country, and they felt like that, that was their island anyways, you know? I, I think a lot of them, it's almost like the the Joseph Coney paradox. Do you remember that a few years ago where everyone was like, if only we could get people to remember who this guy is, Joseph Coney, like we could oh, get rid of him. Yeah, exactly. But like, but it turns out like even though a lot of people are passionate about it and whatnot, when you, it actually comes like finding someone who's going to go into the jungle with a gun and try to hunt this guy, you know, or like anything else like that, like it, you start having a little bit more trouble, you know. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Of course, you know, like, there's a lot of, a lot of intelligence guys that are like, he's been dead for years. <laughs> I, I know there's a lot of people, there's a lot of controversy saying, like, the, the people that he's fighting are not really good people either, you know, and by, like, taking them out, it's not going to... Well, there's... I mean, let, let's be honest, they're, they're African warlords. Yeah, I, I think a lot, it's almost like taking out one mob boss, and then it's just going to grow another head kind of thing, and then, a lot of people, when they realize that, they're like, well, shoot, yeah, I, I don't, I, I like liking this video on Facebook, but when it comes to volunteering to put my life on the line, you better go over there after this guy, then it's a different and, story. And, and I'll be completely honest with you, but, like, he has obviously, Saddam was a very bad guy, but more people in the region were afraid of him. <laughs> that's why they weren't acting up. <laughs> because, like, the, uh, that was one of his whole reasons for, like, you know, he didn't want weapons, uh, or UN weapons inspectors looking at his stuff because he didn't want Iran to know that he wasn't armed with uh, any weapons, or didn't have an active uh, chemical weapons like, program. Like, uh, when, um, because the, in the Iran-Iraq war in 1988, mm -hmm. uh, the 
Iraqi Air Force was so, by especially the Barrage F1 pilots, was so good at uh, defeating the Iranian Air Force. The Iranians actually started assassinating uh, Barrage pilots after the war. <laughs> It doesn't surprise me. They they have like vendettas like that sometimes. Like if they can find out who is fighting them. Okay. Yeah, but it's like you know, like, Fury and Iran were more scared of Stom than they, they. That's why they weren't acting up. Yeah. Stom was there. And now look what's going on. <laughs> well, a lot of people they they were criticizing you know the Iraq War back in the day and everything. First of all, I don't think it was about oil. There was a lot more to it than that. But, you know, for the, for going to, you know, by now, I think Tony Blair said it best. He, he said, like, you know, I'll, I'll apologize for underestimating an insurgency that came after it. And I'm, I'll apologize for, for um, thinking that there was an active weapons of mass destruction program going on at that time, you know, when we invaded. But he won't apologize for taking out a, a, a dictator that was breaking the rules that he agreed on, you know, that was keeping us out of Gulf War One. you know, like, that's the reason we didn't push into Baghdad, is we had to set up agreements that, you know, you would let you and weapons inspectors in and whatnot. Not only that, he was a brutal dictator. And then, um, and then on top of that, on, on top of all that, he, he said, like, you know what, and for those who said, like, that we shouldn't do anything, it was a huge disaster. Well, we tried sending in ground troops, like full-on war, you know, in Iraq and Afghanistan, where we took out essentially the existing regime and replaced our own. And people say that doesn't work. So then in Libya, we tried it with airstrikes and whatnot. And that, you know, that didn't work out too well. Well, then in Syria, we tried it, you know, just by arming rebels and whatnot. And that didn't work out too well. Yeah, so, so like, it, it, you know, had we not done it any of these other ways, I'm not sure that any of these subsequent methods would have worked any better. You know, like, it's, and, you know, it, it's, it's a lot more complex than a lot of people like to put it, I think, you know, like, that it's, just, oh, it was fought over this one little thing, or it was fought, fought because this one company wanted to get rich or something, or, you know, mm -hmm. I don't think there was any sort of conspiracy on that level. I, I think that, what a lot of people don't want to realize is that something small, like some guys, you know, smuggling some box cutters on airplanes can cause such a stir that it will alter history, you know. <laughs> like it's, we don't like to go, in, but the same would be said about some crazy guy like Lee Harvey Oswald, you know, like, who would have thought, you know, like, imagine how much different history would be if it wasn't for one guy, you know, and his, his crazy ambitions. <laughs> oh, yeah. So it's <laughs> yeah, and, it, and it's it's hard for I think a lot of people to accept that that like we live in that fragile of a world, so to speak. That it, it could be, you know. <laughs> Turns out the Illuminati doesn't control everything, you know. Even if they do, you know, it's like uh, anyone who thinks that uh, like uh, there's just so many variables, like random variables, you know, like. Uh, Lee Harvey Oswald's out there, John Wilkes Booth's out there that you just don't know about. Oh, you know? God. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just some kook like that. Like, it's, that that guy's probably responsible for a ton of gun laws, you know, or like, in, you know, some in, tied to at least a ton of gun laws. There, what was it, the Brady Bill, I think, was written because yeah, of that yeah, incident? Because, uh, Brady was the one who took the yeah, a Secret yeah, Service agent yeah. got shot. Yeah, okay, so, uh, back in, there was, a, you know the Jeremy Falls right? Oh, yeah, yeah. You are not talking to Anthony, because he said, wait, why? Huh? I was just saying, wait, what, uh, who shot Reagan over what? Over, over a girl? Uh, yeah, so a dude tried, tried to impress Jodie Foster by yeah, shooting the president. So back in the, the 70s and early 80s, you know, we're talking A-list actors, you know, like, yeah. All the, all the, she was a taxi, taxi driver, if you've heard of that, you know. Yeah. Taxi driver, Silence of the Lambs. Uh, all, all that stuff, you know, like, I, I'm trying to think of who do you, like, I guess today's equivalent would be Andrew Lee Joe. Oh, okay, okay. So it would be like you shooting the president because you want Andrew Lee to go out with you. 
because you because you you think she'll be impressed by this. You, you think like somehow that like by shooting the president, she'll come to the conclusion like, oh, this guy's really cool or something. Like that. <laughs> It's weird, you know, like just little things like that, like just, just some crazy guy you can never account for. It's it's almost a surprise that disasters don't happen more often. Maybe that's maybe that's something I can restore a little bit of faith in humanity right there is the fact that like there there is like disaster everything is a disaster away and then it, that that dude that shot up uh, the, the concert in Las Vegas recently, like for no reason it seemed like, or nobody knows why it seems like. I I have no idea why someone like the the reason it hasn't happened before isn't I don't think because like the the reason it hasn't happened before is because it, I, I don't think most people in this world are that crazy to do such a thing you know like it because obviously, like, it, there's been plenty of opportunities like that before, you know, but it's like, it, man. Yeah, Like, I wonder, like, if far into the future, like, we're worrying about guns and whatnot right now. Like, far into the future, like, who's to say that, like, someone might, might be able to have access to plutonium, you know? Or plutonium-239 or something. Uh, speaking of that, some college out of the East Coast of Chemistry Department lost track of their sample of weapons-based plutonium. Ah, oh, man. Well, I wonder how much of it there was, though. I don't know, probably not that much, because it was probably just, you know, just for education, but still, it's like, well, I need to Yeah, it's, well, I mean, you, yeah, they should be able to find it, or hopefully they will, it's, it's, it's pretty, if it's weapons grade, it, it gives off a lot of, it will blow, oh, wait, no, well, no, it, I mean, you compress it in order to make it explode, or you, you have to have something called critical mass, but it's, it's, it doesn't, uh, yeah, yeah like, I, all I'm saying is, like, one day, like, we're worried about guns right now, but I think, like, you know, it, who's to say, like, it, 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 let's just fast forward, like, I don't know, a thousand years or something like that, like, if you ever think that, like, human beings will be capable of things like we see in Star Wars or Star Trek or something like that, like, any one of those crew members on one of those big ships could probably end life on a planet like this if they wanted to. Okay. Yeah. So they, they want one grain. <laughs> oh, what's that? They want one grain. Of it. Oh, yeah, that's not too much. That would be I, very I, hard you to. Still, you can still do some pretty nasty stuff. I mean, you could you could definitely like poison the area, so to speak, with that. But it, you wouldn't be well, able to well, I mean, visit. I don't think. And that would still give off enough radiation to make a pretty good booty bomb. Oh, I'm sure. Uh, you done it? Oh, you're talking about that the other day? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I almost think you're flossing. I asked what would happen if I had 120 pound balls of uranium in my hand. <laughs> yeah, that, that, uh, no, that was uranium, though. I think, like, the Nagasaki bomb just had, like, a 20-pound lump, or 20-pound sphere in it that got imploded to critical mass density. If I 
No, you don't. <laughs> No, but if you think about it, like, how are... Oh, shoot, my bad. What was that? Pol polonium tea. Polonium tea? <laughs> yeah. PT. I don't get it. Oh. Uh, a periodic table. Uh, or plutonium. Uh, periodic no, no, polonium. Oh. So, Okay, so let, let me explain oh. this to you. Um, hold on. I was just saying, like, just uh, imagine, like, I guess in the far future, like, it, you, I, I think the problem lies more with, uh, with how, how people, how society treats others and whatnot, you know, it's like, just imagine, I guess, like, being in a, in a universe like that, where, like, there, we had, you know, a crazy guy who owned a spaceship that could just redirect the asteroid if you wanted to, you know? Okay. <laughs> well, yeah, like the like that. That's what like the bad guy in, in Bond always does. But he's saying like a, a thousand years, like uh, average Joe won't be able to do something crazy, you know? Okay, so uh, explain the Colonial team. In 2006, there was a former KGB agent uh, called Alexander who met Bianca. He was living in. He took the, the political asylum with it defected to the United Kingdom. Uh, <laughs> in November, he suddenly just out of the blue came ill, was hospitalized, died three weeks later. Turns out, a Russian FSO, Federal Protective Services, so kind of ca Russian counterintelligence, uh -huh. put Polonium 210 in his teeth. Oh, so they tracked him that way, I guess? Spike no, no, Sam, 11 o'clock. They, they, they tracked him down, and yeah, then no. they, they put a radioactive element in his tea. So when you drink it, you drank it into radioactive isotopes. Oh, all right. That's what came from the inside out. <laughs> that was not fun, I guess, for him. Oh, uh, well, I mean, you know, back then. <laughs> that was probably the most painful three weeks of his life. <laughs> I'm uh, left ash. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, figure out what's where this knucklehead is real quick. I'm gonna add a little bit of power and go ahead of you because I got uh, I got the fuel for it. So basically, after he died, they did their autopsy on him. He had about 200 times the lethal left dose of chlorine in his body. Oh shoot! I'm gonna turn off my uh, heaters too. Which, let, let's be completely honest here, you know, Colonium is not something that you can buy, so obviously you know, someone had to give it to him, which was obviously, <laughs> considering he was a defecting KGB officer. Yeah. So, well, we, we got a pretty good idea of what was going on. I had about 60 miles I had a little fire off this arm. Shoot, what the heck did I just do? Uh, yeah, I should be. I'm uh, just trying to plug in these uh, coordinates, but my uh, my mouse keeps du double clicking a lot of times. Like, oh yeah. my gosh! Uh, right, I think I just did it again. Yeah, two five. There we go. Okay, I got it finally. Three zero five, Maggie. Yeah. Three one zero, Magnum.
310 ducks away. I go ahead and go to uh, TOO on this second knucklehead over here. And I uh, get him loaded in. Oh, come on. There we go. Three zero five, Magnum. Shoot. Damn. What happened? Oh, I'm just, uh, my, my mouse keeps double, double clicking on me. Uh -oh. oh, man. Three, nine, five, six, four, four. Okay, there we go, I finally got it. 310 Magnum. And should be already in the zone on the second one. away. I'm at Dakota at this time. I'm going to uh, start falling back towards you. Skimming the water right now. They're pretty low. Yeah. One of my arms is still inbound. Oh, I didn't see you had an arm on board. Really, yeah. I'm actually going to turn left here. Uh, go ahead and get my GBU just loaded up. Yeah. And, uh, and drive. <laughs> I, I actually didn't even realize you fired off uh, the slams because I didn't even hear you were actually calling. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I said, uh, ducks, or, yeah, shoot, that's actually glider bombs, but yeah, that, I guess these could be, these would be called bruisers, I think. No, no, it would be a rifle pistol. Oh, yeah. Bruisers, only shit. Ah. And then, when you don't have any farms online, it's Arizona. Ah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> like, I'm a I've heard uh, Dakota for once you're at uh, air ground ordnance. Oh. Yeah, it, it's specifically for anti radiation. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, I'm out of oh, air, okay. anything air to ground. I'm not coming back to you, Anthony. Yeah, same with mine. I think mine just kept going. It might be because ours were already destroyed. Shoot, I think I already overshot, yeah. No worries. Uh, 205 bombs away. Yeah, I 
Yeah. 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 Well, if we don't have uh, anything uh, for it to lock onto, a lot of times they'll just go off into their own way. <laughs> yeah, you know, if it, if, it uh, if we had like if we destroyed the SAM sites, you know, it'll just overfly it because we don't have any any radar yeah, for it to lock so on I'm to anymore. Oh shoot! Sure. <laughs> yeah, this one is uh my. My uh, slam missiles are still inbound. All right. I'm gonna go out uh, nose cold. Figure out which ones are prepared to get and start cleaning up. Three zero five is the target area. Do you have anything for him? What was that? Do you have anything for him? Uh, other than bombs, no. We well, could probably hit him with a bomb. We got him shooting you down. Uh, I'm yeah. thinking one of our harms might have already hit him. Like it's. No, oh, okay, alright. I'm coming right. I mean, it depends though. Be ready to maneuver if he does start locking you, you know. But I'm not. Uh, yeah, if, if you got this UPS guy to bomb, be able to punch him in too. Yeah. And as long as you're close enough, it'll start angling itself to where it needs to be. It's, uh. Yeah. This missile's still inbound too. Looks like your, uh, your missile just went deep, right? Yeah. Let's take a look at that. Oh, shoot. I think I just killed something. Do you engage the fences? Oh, you're getting engaged? No, are you? Oh, no. Okay, just make it clear. Is it missing? Yeah, that's point four where it's at. I got a 35 seconds to release. Yeah. And you're you're going head on with the Huh. I, I, it looks like it did lock. You're going for the right one, right? Yeah. Huh. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm uh, on its beam right now, twenty one miles. I'm not zagging it back the other way. Shit. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't. Uh, I mean, if it's engaging you, then it, yeah, you don't want to get too close to it then. No, I'm, I'm flying away from it right uh, now. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm in a steady, just a straight line right now, away from it, but I'm, I'm too high and too far for anything to hit. He's on my right there. Uh, yeah. 
shoot. So I don't know if I'm gonna be able to kill it with guns or anything. No worries. Yeah. So what's your uh, plan of action? Because I'm kind of out of weapons for it. If you don't got anything that can hit it, you're just burning gas, you know. Kind of narrows down the possibilities for me already. <laughs> I'm uh, traveling away from it back towards the ship. Because that kind of uh, is the only way to go at this point. Unless you have any other plan, like a way to attack it or anything. But the only way I could think of is if you got a coordinate and then you like lobbed your bomb almost like a quarterback hail mary pass, you know, and just like got your speed up and pulled up and just pickled your bomb and threw it at it, you know. But yeah, I'm not too sure, dude. <laughs> I don't have the spike in the sand anymore. I still got a missile lock, but I'm not running it. Yeah. It? Well, what's your uh, fuel state right now? Uh, fuel state's 14.4. Ah, yeah. I'm going to stay way up here, at least for now. There's uh, Sam again. I don't think this one's going to... I think this one is just being picked. I mean, I got four. Well, you know how to do that, right? Like the Hail Mary pass kind of thing? Like it's a... Uh, no. No, uh, it's a... Essentially, you're traveling... You got to direct your energy because that, that bomb isn't, you know, being propelled by anything other than your initial momentum that you're releasing it with. So it's, right. it's just like passing a football. Like that football won't have a rocket boost or anything like that. Like whatever you energy it leaves the quarterback's hand with, you know, is what it gets. So you gotta. Right. Okay. I'm, I'm flying right through the same thing. There's no missiles up right now. But I got 35 seconds in total speed. If you can make it 35 seconds, then you can get it. But, but the important thing, uh, you can uh, pull up and it will minimize your time too. But don't do that until you get to like 15 seconds. Otherwise, you're just gonna start losing energy fast or quicker than you should. So. Oh, shit. I'm just gonna lob it. Pull up, though, as you do it. That's the way to do it, is you gotta... You know how a quarterback arcs it? You know, like a Hail Mary pass? Like, you gotta arc it up into, over the horizon kind of thing. Bombs away. Very was it in zone? Yeah, it was in zone. But Holy shit. I'm uh, turning back towards you. Put your ass directly, point it right at that uh, yeah. sand site. Do the hippie hippie shake shake and get the heck out of there. <laughs> I'm on nose hot. Go back to nose hot. Ah, I see ya. Uh, you're traveling towards the SAM site right now. You're gonna wanna go to waypoint zero and just start traveling right towards waypoint zero. Otherwise, you're gonna get shot down by that SAM site because you keep going towards it. <laughs> All right. You're trying to get away from it. You know, and, uh, even if it shoots a missile at you, try to dodge it away from it. You know, like za zig and zag in a direction away from it, but don't drag yourself into it. And my bombs are heading right for it. Nice. I'm at uh, Angels 38. You might want to be in... Yeah, nice. You're, you should be fast enough to die. You got hits on the sand, dog. Nice! Hell yeah. Yeah, it is Dunsky. Hell yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be curious to watch this hack view. Uh, I'm not uh, heading your way right now, 35 miles. Yeah. Roger, 
I'm uh, actually in between you and the ship right now. Or you and the waypoint. Oh, okay, perfect. I'm showing a thousand knots closure. Roger. I am uh, climbing through Angel's 2-8 right now for 3-5. Yeah. Uh, fuel stays 12.4. Roger. Yeah, that's the uh, way you do it, is you pull up and you do that, uh, you, you're lobbing the bomb, like giving it a ballistic trajectory, you know, like th or throwing it, like arcing it into it. Oh shoot, so I got four of them on the ray gun. Because it's 600, 601, 602, 603, 604, so five. Oh, okay. Yeah, so five. That's more than I was expecting. Well, that's, that's the entire squad. They might have some of them. Uh, they probably only got to take two of them with them, I bet. Yeah, they probably keep some on land and, like, recycle when it's through. Yeah. Oh shoot, I'm getting a lag spike. Heavy one. Ah, there we go. Right, I'm gonna have a little bit of catching up to do. Roger. <laughs> uh, leveling off at, uh, 350. Yeah. There's the lag spike. Just powered through it. Uh, showing a hundred knots closure, about uh, one and a half miles behind you right now. Still pretty high in the horizon. Uh, ETA, 30 minutes. Yeah. Left Eshish. Right. That's a really sloppy yeah, joint. Yeah, uh, leave the stream up when you want to the attack. You don't want to watch it with him. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was risky business, though. I was thinking we were going to just go back to the ship and leave that, that sand side up, but... Nah, Doc, come on. Oh, weird. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you 
you had never done it like a, a Hail Mary bombing. <laughs> no, I have not. That was my first one. Oh man. We're just doing that on the fly on a mission. Oh, it's risky. I bet it hooked a missile at you probably like 20, 20 seconds or so. Or... Uh, hooked a missile at me at about 20 seconds out. Yeah, I know a lot. And uh, yeah. at about 11, 12 seconds is when I pulled up to uh, about 15 degrees nose up and just curled him. Oh man, damn, that missile might have been close then. That's how I got to it. Or... Cause like it goes pretty fast, you know, if you're still going towards it on an intercept path. Yeah, and, uh, it fired two, actually. Oh, man. Looking at the back. it out a little bit. I shall go back to uh, right wing. This altitude though. Now no, my wing tanks on. I wonder if we could do anything inverted. I doubt it could. Yeah, there's so little energy up here. Yeah. Everything slips around a lot more.
Home Fuel keeps on beeping at me. Although it is going 30 knots, so it should be about 35 nautical miles south. So we should be getting into the next, uh... Joystick. Yeah, it's pulling up on me. Uh -oh. There we go. Oh, it's still pulling up a little bit on me. right on the verge of getting it. So that'll be 30, yeah. about two more miles, I think. We should get it. <clears throat> yep, there it is. Death Pony has joined the game. What's up? intimidating name. I just had a spike. I wonder if, not a not a RWR spike, but I thought I had a lag spike. Which sometimes means someone just spawned in. Our six is clear though. The cool thing is, though, is do you, uh, if you zoom out and do a course select, you can actually go ahead and, uh, oh shoot, you left the game. You can uh, already go ahead and uh, go to course select if you want to. All right, for uh, 167 degrees, you know. Okay, so. 
Yeah. And it will, uh, now it's going to like turn really far to the left at first, but it's okay. It's going to slowly track back to the right, you know, once you're on course. <laughs> You'll actually yeah. already be on expected final bearing. Roger. Sorry about that. I didn't realize it would automatically go as soon as I clicked into that screen. No, you're fine. Yeah, I was expecting it to. That's why I ease out a little bit. Death Pony's back. out here in a second. And it's, uh, we'll just track this for about uh, 30 miles or so and then I'll start coming back to the right. Correct. Maybe about three minutes or so. Yeah, you can actually already see it's uh, slightly turning to the right. I think it is, at least. Oh, yeah. yeah, just slowly tracking that uh, heading bug, see how it's drifting to the right. I think that's also because the ship's moving from uh, left to right right now, relative to us. Right. <laughs> F one OG substituted by F thirty five A. There he is, he's back behind us. You see those uh, tracers? I know he's not in an attack pack to aircraft, so that's not that's why I'm not rea reacting or anything. Oh yeah. Poor door. <laughs> Tuck under. Not bad. Slowly getting a little bit more and more. Uh, see how it's like tracking it further and further to the right. Back 
come back to the left a little bit is my guess, or a lot of times it will. Actually, no, it actually looks like it did pretty well getting us on a course. There we go, yep. It's dragging it pretty good. Yeah. Close enough for government work. Twenty minutes out. Now, is this a case one? Uh, no, no, this would be a uh, case two at best. A uh, case three, actually. What do you do for case two? Uh, well, actually, it would be case three, but yeah, it's um, uh, the case two is pretty much the same procedure, actually. I'd have to read back up on it. But I know this would be case three just because of the freaking IMC conditions. So it's going to be a straight in. One, two, zero, zero. And I, case two is pretty much the same, I believe. But it's just that it's, I think different calls are done at different times. Shoot. I got to read back up on that. The only important ones that I live by are case one and case three. My CV1 approach. That's the only thing that's relevant. Usually. <laughs> now right. we're uh, bringing all the tanks back with us. Today. Death Pony's in here somewhere. Somewhere. <laughs> I don't see his contrail anymore. So wait, it gave you uh, less gas or or more gas without uh, minimum burners. Uh, no, it gave me uh, more gas or less gas with the burners, but I, I would have been too heavy for the track. Uh, another way you can fix that is going a little bit above on your power settings. Because, you know, you get to the sweet spot, and then you start to drop off again. Right, alright. I got it set for, uh, 6,000. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, I'm going to say you guys say. Yeah. Super. 
supersonic. Yeah, we're uh, supersonic already, it looks like. Yep, now 1.03. We've entered hyperspace. about 10 minutes so I uh, start commencing so what so we can uh, start commencing oh, right. all right trapping with the estimate of 5.0 oh uh, death pony left Bad line of rest. Right. <laughs> Shoot, I'm going to external view and I messed it up. Got done messed up. Dude, we need to do like, uh, like, me, you, Kenny, who else, uh, train of flight, he says Blackout could be in there. What do you want to do? And then Junior, too, we need to get Junior back in here. Just do like a massive strike with like six F-18s, like six super bugs. Oh, that'd be awesome. Like all of us in formation just making it to a target, and like. Man, we can blow the shit out of something. That'd be amazing. Like, just do a huge, like, airfield bombing. Like, maybe only, like, two SAM sites or something, but, but, like, the rest of the jets just have, like, Mark 84s and just do, like, a formation bombing, you know? Or, like, four of them just fly over and carpet bomb area. Yep. <laughs> Oh yeah, I need to remember, remind me to uh, look at the tack view. You know, we gotta watch right. that. The real ones here are being a fuel. 100 miles. <laughs> oh, Saint! Yeah, we need to get Saint. 
Uh, Saint, too. Because then he just got the Superbug and Tack Pack installed again, he was saying the other day. Oh, hell yeah. That's a great thing about the Super Bug, too, is you can have, like, a lot of them in a server, and it doesn't really affect lag that much, just because they're very efficiently coded. Right. And, uh, some other jets. Dude, just seeing, like, that many jets on deck getting ready to take off would be freaking ridiculous. That'd be awesome to see. Yeah. An agent, if he gets his stuff back. Yeah. Who's that? Uh, he's a former uh, missile tech from uh, the Navy. Oh, okay. uh, uh, we actually met him through uh, FSX. But he's, uh, his computer broke on him recently. Oh, man. Dude, that would be 10 jets, I think, right there. <laughs> that would be nuts. <laughs> Right? Seeing a wall of ten jets? That would be all of our jets. Yeah, that would be the, our entire squadron right there, pretty much. Except for, like, Drew and Joe. Unless you know, so Joe gets his computer up and running. Oh, my God. Yeah, actually, that would be eight. Then, like, if we got Drew and Joe, that would be uh, all ten. Like... All ten airframes. And NF-300 through 312. But they don't have all the, uh, they skip, uh, some of the airframe numbers. Like, I know, uh, 8 and 9. Yeah, there, are, there is no NF-308 and 309, even in real life. Or, like, the, the same jets that we got on our inventory webpage, I know, are the real jets in real life. Right. I think it's actually 11 jets. Is that how big the real squadron is? Yeah. Not not pilot wise though. Usually they all have like, you know, twice as many pilots as they do jets, but Oh wow. Uh... Like seventy miles. But because we're the virtual squadron, we only everyone gets their own jet. So right. <laughs> but yeah, in real life I don't think they uh you actually have to get some seniority before you get your name on a jet, I think. minutes I'm going to start falling behind to space this out. do it for too long. Let's see if I can't get it to back to left dash. Ah, eh, left dash-ish. Yeah, it's, I don't want to invert it too long at this altitude. And <laughs> but yeah, it is possible to do it at this altitude, but I'm going to start off falling back a little bit. Space this out. We 
are 50 miles after the ship about to commence. Yep. I just secured from Supersonic. Take a little bit of a shallower descent this time and start coming down. Just because it's so, uh, the visibility sucks so bad. <laughs> I don't want to fly myself into the ocean or like have too steep of an angle, you know? I see you. Way up ahead. I don't know if you want to do it that early and that steep. <laughs> In fact, I'd probably pull out of that if you don't have uh, ground contact. Yeah. Nah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just hit that uh, turbulent layer. Just hit the uh, rain. Um, Angels 14, I think it was. Lightning was close. <laughs> what do you think? 310 is 20 miles hooked down. Two zero zero feet is my target. I uh, still fourteen miles aft. Under four and a half. 
should be like 10 miles in front of me. I'll pick it up a little bit. So I haven't gotten needles yet. Three one zero is ten miles. Needles fly up, fly left. We got here for fuel three point seven. up here because I'm almost a glide slip intercept. I was trying to keep it a little bit fast. Three one zero is three and a half miles down and dirty. There's glide slip intercept. Friggin' turbulence. <laughs> there we go. 310 is 1.3 miles on glide slope on center line Rhino Ball, 3.6 manual. Roger Ball, 36 knots over deck. Roger, appreciate it. Getting blown around. A little right for lineup too. Uh, I got a visual. I'm getting blown. Not in a good way. Three wire. Uh, hell yeah, that was a cool ass mission. I'm gonna, I need to look at the tag view though, I think. Yeah, I'll uh, watch that real quick. I'm just gonna taxi you right here. I think that will work for right now. I'm gonna go ahead and kill the server if that's cool. Some of those, uh, yeah, 
that sucks is we can uh <clears throat> Alright, there we go. I think it's showing it now. Alright, so... This is our... Uh, so we got on deck first. Oh, and then that's us with a tanker. So we break off the tanker, we start going inbound. So let's see what happened here. These are our uh, harms. That's my... Uh, that's the... Um, AGM 84H. Uh, so that one went to that target. That one did destroy that. This one, though, over here. Let's see what happened to it. Uh, your harms. Let's see. Or I'm gonna. I'll take a look at those in just a sec. Roger. So this one was inbound to that other SAM site. Let's see what it did. Mine was? No, uh, this was uh, my uh, other uh, oh, okay. bomb. So it did a pop-up. Let's see, it pops up at the end. So this is the other SAM site. Like, this is why I'm su surprised the other one continued to engage you. Engage us. Because it looks like we got a direct hit on it. Huh. Oh, mine took out just a launcher. So that, uh, AGM-84 only took out one launcher. And not enough to fully disable it. Oh, yeah. It, uh, it hit early? Yeah. Let's see. Here's your, uh... Yeah, that's your harm. So you fired off the harm. Or this is the second one that went off to ten buck two. So yeah, that was after. I don't know why it didn't hit, but oh well. Weapon error. Texas Instruments error. <laughs> that's who makes the harm. <laughs> Or it helps make it. I know that there's different. I, that's actually Raytheon is, I think, the primary manufacturer. Right. Yeah, my arm went off the fucking shit though, dude. <laughs> no, they, let's let's watch your uh, your GBUs. Oh uh, yeah. Oh, here's one of them already. Oh yeah. Okay. It looks like. He's got pretty much direct hits on it. There goes that one. Yep. Boom. Uh, here's the second one. This is at the, This is you charging the SAM site. Oh man. Yeah. See, so mine mine hit. So it took out a launcher. That yeah. might have been why it wasn't. It didn't engage you until you were really close. <laughs> Actually, like, there goes one missile that's coming at you. Yeah. So here I am. Yeah, it's like we're beaming it together. Or putting on our beam maneuvering queue. Ooh, this one. Let's see how close this one comes. Yeah, that one's falling away from you. So yeah, I think that was the one I was looking at. It's pretty oh. close, though. Oh, there's two of them right there. I just lifted off. Yeah. This is up before I dropped my GBU. Yeah, this is before. That one just dropped off. Another one just lifted off. It's something out there. This is players like Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm fucked out wasted all my players. Yeah, as soon as I lose those two missile locks, I immediately turn back to the site. That one was nowhere near me, that's the one that they shot at me, it looks like. That one is falling out of the sky long before it got to me. Yeah. See, look at this though. So there you are, and here I am. See, look at that. And then it, it launches at me right before I drop my DBUs. 
Yeah, there it is. So you're pulling up right now, looks like. Yep, there they go. You're way, you're out of there. You're doing the hippy hippy shake shaking. <laughs> getting the heck out of there. Making like a tree and getting the heck out of there. <laughs> oh, it's going right to the right. oh man, actually, I'm gonna. I need to look at that. All right. What, well, whoa! Do you see that other scene just zip by? No, no, I didn't. <laughs> it was pretty badass. <laughs> like went right, our birds went past each other in there. Yeah. You catch that Back to the Future reference? Or the. Never mind. <laughs> that, that, that is probably one of the best possible. Oh. Nice. Oh, there it is. Nice, dude. That was a perfect hit. Right, we're gonna we're gonna take a look at what happened here. We'll take a look at how close these. So, this is in two times speed. So there goes your bombs, you're going out this way, there goes the SAM. Let's still look at it in real time. That, that's probably one of the best hits. That SAM's still going 1.4. Holy shit. Mach. So it's gaining on you slowly. Oh man, look at that. That's not far at all. Actually, let's pause this and look how far away it is. Which one is it? That, that's when you start hitting the chairs flat, uh, the flares, chap, everything. I'll <laughs> uh, all the countermeasures at the Wahoo. <laughs> there we go, that's uh, half, less than half a mile behind you. Less than half a mile. Yeah, so let's see if it gets any closer. It's still going Mach 1.6, but you're going pretty fast too. You're going 1.1. Yeah, it got to, it got to 0 0.3 nautical miles. Look at that. And then, that. Oh. And then you're like, then it's like flying formation with you. <laughs> As it like runs out of energy. Yeah, now yeah. it's finally falling out of the sky. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> that was good, though. That was a... Heck, that yeah. Was <laughs> that was definitely, a, yeah, you had an awesome hit strike there. That was a... Yeah, while while that thing was flying in formation with you, there's your uh, bombs. We'll take one more look at that. <laughs> Pow! <laughs> like both of them like rolled into this SA2 launcher. It looks like it's actually a BTR80 or a BTR70. Like, Did it get the whole thing? Yeah, you got the entire SAM site for that. All ground targets were destroyed. <laughs> Well, I'll be darned. If you put a bomb on a BTR, it's the funniest thing. <laughs> no, Death Pony did, in fact, have a attack pack. It yeah, looks like. Do you see that? Because it, it says that he launched, like, some Mark 84s. Oh, shit. Yeah, I'm trying to... Yeah, let's see. But he was in a... Remember, it substituted him. He was in like a F-104. F-100, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, it says Death Pony has fired two HVARs and five Mark 82s. At the same site? No, I think he just jettisoned everything. After yeah. he uh, spawned in behind us. Like, it probably just spawned him in the air, you know. Right. Oh, man. Uh, you know what? Actually, we should make a tech for that paper code and have it with the HVAOs, so they give it an 03. Oh my god. Well, hey, no, no, like, the World War II, Piper Cooks had And that's a that's a wrap. That's a successful mission. I appreciate anyone tuning in. This has been a late night stream. Oh yeah. But, so yeah. Holy cow. Yeah, but uh. 
Uh, yeah, I appreciate anyone tuning in. We will uh, most likely be back for, for at least one flight tomorrow. Uh, be seeing about that, but uh, or what time? But we're gonna call it a stream here and uh, sign on out. And wishing everyone a uh, happy flying until next time.